Well, how y'all doing today? I hope y'all having a blessed day. So I'd like to touch on the subject of historical gardening. Um, uh, now, I come from a long line of uh, people from the South, uh, the Midwest. Uh, they grew things to survive. It was a family affair. Uh, they canned to get through the winter and they had root cellars. And uh, yeah, it was a matter of survival then. Now, uh, my grandmother, neither one of them really grew flowers that much, but my grandmother in West Virginia, she grew a hibiscus, all right? And it wasn't a dwarf. This thing got eight feet tall. And it grew for decades, all right? And uh, when she passed away, my father went and got it, and he brought it up north and planted it in his yard. I'm hoping it's still there today. If I have, if I had had the ability to dig it up and uh, B and B it by ball and burlap it and plant it somewhere, I would have taken it. And I, I kept telling my sister, I hope somebody got it. I hope somebody got it. That bothers me to no end. All right, so uh, I was born in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, which was established. In 1635, uh, now my father used to travel from uh, West Virginia into Chicago, Illinois, with his brother and some friends for work. My grandfather was a coal miner. My father had been a coal miner, and he seen what it was doing to my grandfather, and he decided he wasn't going out that way. So him and his brother and a bunch of his friends would uh, pull together their resources and go into Chicago, Illinois, and find work there. They'd all rent a room. Uh, no doubt they slept on the floor there. And they'd make some money, and they'd take it back home. Now, that's where he met my mother. My mother had been in a previous marriage that was abusive, very abusive, and she got out of that, and she was working in a factory and uh, trying to support three daughters. And uh, my father met her there, and my father fell so in love with her that he went up north to Connecticut, which was at the time considered Tobacco Valley. And he went to work there in the tobacco, and I worked tobacco, people. Let me tell you something, that's not easy. It ain't. It really ain't. He saved up enough money to, uh, to get a place and sent for her and her three daughters. Now, of course, when you're going through uh, something like that with your kids, you try to hide as much of it as you possibly can. <clears throat> Pardon me. So uh, they didn't understand, really. To some extent, they did. Uh, but they really didn't like my father because they really wanted their mother and their father back together, so that didn't really work out. As soon as they got old enough to move out, they did. Unfortunately, it, I mean, it, it, that's just the way it happened. And I was born in 1966, and my father at the time had just gone into printing. He retired from printing. The foreman of a printing place. All right, so uh, Connecticut has a long history. They have a long history of a lot of things. I've been to Lafayette Square. I've been to the Capitol and sat in the, the chair that was made out of a tree called a Charter Oak, which is where uh, the Charter Oak was hidden from the British and that document later on became the Declaration of Independence. All right. When you live in a place that is that historical, you either get used to it or you're just not taught enough to appreciate it. Now, in school, they taught us a little bit of stuff. But mainly they took us into Massachusetts where we saw a old iron side. And, and, and uh, I've been to the church where they hung the lanterns and walked the cobblestone. Uh, uh, cobblestone streets there, but, you know, they really didn't touch home with Connecticut, which has a lot of history. 
if you like history, Connecticut has a lot of history. Um, Jonathan Edwards, uh, I've been to his place of birth and to the church where he taught, one of the greatest ministers that ever lived. Um, Jonathan Fitch created the steam engine. My nephew is, unless he has children, is the last of the Fitches. Uh, somebody tried to steal his patent, uh, but enough people knew that he had invented the steam engine. The credit went to him, but unfortunately, no money did. All right, so I went to, uh, I lived in Coventry, Connecticut. All right, I went to Nathan Hale Elementary School. Years later, my children did too. Uh, Nathan Hale, and I've been to his homestead, took, took my son and my grandson there when it was open during the summer to be viewed. Um, he was a great patriot. Nathan Hale was a great patriot that was executed by the British for being a, a, a traitor. He was only like 14, 15 years old. But also one of the things that they have in uh, Coventry, Connecticut, where I lived, was a place called Kaplan's Gardens. And uh, it was owned by a woman named uh, Delma Greenia Simmons. Okay, She was known as the First Lady of Herbs. She was an herbalist. And you could go there, and they had a barn that was open, and you'd walk in, and there was all kinds of things hanging, drying from the rafters, and things that were packaged. And I mainly went there to get honey sticks for my tea. All right? Because back then, they were hard to find, and they were only 10 cents a piece. I'd pack a lunch and go. Years later, I took my kids. She, she didn't have a whole lot of property. But she had it split up into gardens, and you could walk through them. She had one particular garden called a Shakespeare's Garden, and everything that grew in there was something that was mentioned in a Shakespeare's play. On one occasion I was there, they come and told me because they recognized me, okay, that she was doing a, 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 a surprise book signing. So if you bought one of her books, she'd sign it. My husband at the time pitched a fit. He didn't want to stay, so I missed out on that. Looking back on it, I would have told him to go sit in the car. She wrote books. She gave lectures. People, lectures, uh, people uh, come, from a, come from all over the world to have dinner. She'd cook with all her herbs and stuff to have dinner with her. She died in 1997. All right? And, and, and the town has been after her uh, widower, if he's still alive, uh, for this, that, and the other thing. They're just trying to claim it as a historical landmark and make money off of it is what they're doing. And it, it's a sad thing, it really is. But it used to be a beautiful place where you could just go and sit, and it was peaceful. It was quiet. It, it, was, it was beautiful. She was a pioneer in her day, okay? Not only did she grow herbs, she was known for the first lady of herbs, but she cooked with them, and like I said, people would come up from all of England, everywhere to sit and have a, a, a rustic meal with her. I really hate that I did not get a book and have it signed because my husband just wanted to go. It wasn't his thing, all right? I really hate that. The other place is called Elizabeth's Garden, all right? That, that's in West Hartford. There's a lot of entrances to that park. The main entrance is off of a street called Asylum Street. And yes, people, there used to be an asylum there. Now, yeah, Hartford was established in, in 1635. 
back then, uh, yeah, there was an asylum there. Elizabeth Park was established in 1887. And she put in a, a rose garden there on about two and a half acres in 1904. And I used to go as a teenager and walk through this rose garden. It was the first park that was ever opened year-round to people, and it was free. People will rent spots out in this, in this, it's a wonderful rose garden, in this spot, uh, in this rose garden to get married in and have some of their wedding pictures taken in. I've been skating there twice. Skating started there in 1906. That's where I learned that I could not skate. I could not ice skate. That I was one of those people that couldn't chew gum and walk at the same time. And from there I tried roller skating and skiing and no way it was it, the same thing. And I really, I contribute that to having weak ankles, really. <laughs> so, uh, but it was beautiful. And uh, I used to go there and uh, pack a lunch, fried chicken, make macaroni salad, spread out a blanket go walking through the garden and everything. You know, I, I started doing that when I was like 15, 16 years old. So there is a lot of historical gardens in Connecticut, especially in Hartford, Connecticut, in the surrounding areas. I love to plant things. Uh, it kills me that I can't do it here. I'm, I'm still working on it. Uh, I'm Pretty sure I'm going to get some repercussions <laughs> from management, but uh, she's quick to jump on people anyway. Now, my son sent me a hydroponic system last year from Mother's Day, and it had some parts that were broken on it. But he gave me a surprise visit. I hadn't seen him in four years, and he showed up here last weekend, and we went out and got the parts. So I'm going to be working on that. Meanwhile, I, I think still I have time to plant me some stuff and get it going. And I'm going to try that. And it kills me every year because it goes back so far in my family. So far in my family. Where, where planting and canning and root cellars was a, a that's how you got through the winter. It, it, it wasn't something you just did. All right? It was something you did to survive. So I'm going to try my best to do that. I really am. Uh, I do have some seeds that my son gave me. I have some uh, seeds that uh, Miss uh, uh, Ginger Ninja, big shout out to Ginger Ninja. She sent me, uh, sent me a package last year, and it had some seeds in it. They've been in my freezer ever since. I'm going to take a look at them again see if they're viable. Probably going to be using them. But I'm ordering me some soil here, and somebody had done give me a bucket. And a couple other containers, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna grow me something out there. So if you all can plant something, grow something, do it. I never understood that. Now I've been everywhere in the United States more times than I can count, but Alaska and Hawaii. And I don't know how many times I've gone pl uh, past yards that just had, you know, all kinds of property. Nothing growing. Maybe a bush. All right. But I've also seen places where they didn't have a whole much of a front yard and they had everything growing. And the Amish have a wonderful idea. They will plant their fruit trees in their front yard. I have seen rows of fruit trees in people's front yards. All they have to do is step out their front door. Uh, they don't have to go far to, to harvest their fruit. Uh, apple trees, uh, pear trees, cherry trees. And uh, they don't have to go far to uh, maintain it either. I think that's a wonderful thing. Very smart thing. Utilize any property you have. Front yard, <laughs> backyard, uh Plant you some marigolds. Now, I love flowers. I really do. Especially a lily of the valley. Because um, it's so fragrant. 
and um, plant you some marigolds uh, because marigolds are a natural pesticide. I have said this in other vi uh, videos. They actually make a pest control that is used commercially. A pest aside, pardon me, that is made commercially. All right? That is made out of marigolds. You plant you a garden, plant you a few marigolds in between. Now, there's two kinds. One that's just a little plant. One that becomes the size of a bush, I kid you not. I have planted those. They are my favorite. The bush marigolds. One of my other favorite flowers is morning glories. My number one favorite flower is called an oxalis. It is not a seed. It grows from a corn. And each corn grows a little stem. The ones I had... They were purple, the green leaves and purple flowers. And at night they close up like a morning glory. But they look like a butterfly sitting on that little spindly little stem. And during the day, just like a morning glory, they'll open up. And they look like a butterfly. It's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, people need to get back to planting. They really do. And, uh... Yeah, I'm going to do it. There may be some repercussions, uh, but I'm going to give my best shot. <laughs> anyway, uh, ooh, going on 17 minutes here. So that's a little bit about uh, history of planting. All right. And I hope you all get out there with your green thumbs. If you got a green thumb, you know that you know that you know that you've got a green thumb. And I hope you all... Uh, are able to get that out of your system this year. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.